Welcome to the channel, my name is Matisse. Today we're going to talk about Amazing Spider-Man issue 203. Now it's written by Marv Wolfman and the story itself, it's pretty dumb. It's very by the numbers, very much a product of its time. Where you had a team up just to push another lesser known character, in this case Dazzler. But the thing is that since we're dealing with 1970s Dazzler, actually this comic book came out in the 80s, but Disco Queen Dazzler with the roller skates and all. She was such a bizarre character. Again, a product of her time. Now, the origins of Dazzler are fascinating. So, she originally was going to be a character that was going to be promotional material for a real-life disco diva who was African-American. I think it was Donna Summers. I might be wrong, but the idea did not prosper. The idea of a disco-themed character did survive, but they did change her race. So the story starts off, we have Spider-Man who sees Dazzler, she's skating as fast as she can. And she's trying to escape this big energy orb that's following her. Now Spider-Man thinks he's dealing with D-list villain Willow Wisp, who he thought had died, like he had exploded and his energy had dispersed all over the place. Spider-Man jumps in to save Dazzler, but she doesn't trust him and actually blasts him. And it's priceless that the weapon that she uses is a disco ball that she carries around her neck. That amplifies her mutant powers. So Spidey decides to call it a night. Then we get a time jump in the story. Spider-Man goes to the movies with Harry Osborn to see Star Trek 1. While they're watching this flick, the orb that was chasing after Dazzler has morphed into the Light Master. So we're dealing with an even more obscure villain. Now we discovered that Light Master had been defeated by Spider-Man and he fell into this other dimension. Now the thing is that Light Master was able to return to the 616 universe. Thanks to the powers of Dazzler, they were like a beacon for him to return. And also due to the nature of his powers, he was leeching off them, becoming more and more powerful. This battle between Lightmaster and Dazzler ends up blowing up half the movie theater where Peter Parker was. Obviously this leads to Spider-Man to spring into action. And he gets defeated very quickly by the Lightmaster who is able to capture Dazzler. Now what happens is Lightmaster takes Dazzler back to his base that has all this super modern technology. I always wondered where the hell do villains get the money to buy all this equipment. The thing is that he has Dazzler hooked up to this apparatus. I'm not sure if he just wants to feed off all the energy that she could produce. The thing is that Spider-Man breaks in. I'm not sure how Spider-Man found him. That happened a lot in old school Spider-Man stories. He would just jump in to save the day and there was zero explanation how he got there in the first place. I guess Spider-Man writers most of the time wanted to skip over the whole detective work aspect that you could get in a story. The thing is that Spider-Man starts fighting against Lightmaster, everything explodes. He is able to liberate Dazzler but we discover what Lightmaster was trying to do in the first place. He was able to transfer his consciousness into Dazzler's mind. So Spidey's completely blindsided again by Dazzler who tries to blast his head off. Obviously now under supervillain control, but the thing is that Dazzler makes a run for it. Then we get another time jump where Spider-Man is able to hunt down Dazzler. He's able to find her and Dazzler's like, oh my hero, you came here to help me. And well, bam, she tries to blast Spidey again, but this time, Peter was ready. He's able to web her up. They go swinging back to Lightmaster's lab. Spidey's able to hook her up back to Lightmaster's machine. They're able to purge his conscience out of her mind. And then we get another priceless panel where we have Dazzler telling Spidey, Hey, I don't know how I can thank you. And Peter's like, I can think of something. And the whole panel's super suggestive. They totally got it on listening to Barry White, I can imagine. But my mind's in the gutter. 
Now this particular issue had a lot going on in it. It was super stupid, but stupid fun. So we're gonna leave this video here. I hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.